Now, We 31 Sports with Nolan Knight. It was a busy week of high school basketball here at Wallace State Community College, and it was the Class 3A Boys and Girls Northwest Region Semifinals that wrapped up the week. In the girls' Class 3A Northwest Region Semifinal, the Clements Colts were taking on Childersburg. The Lady Colts would jump all over the Tigers. First half, the Colts were already racing towards a win. Nice move from Taylor Farah. And the Colts would capitalize on their suffocating press up court to Leah Childress for an easy two. She'd lead the game with 20 points, and the Colts would take a 25-point lead into the break thanks to this three from Josie Childress. In the second half, pretty much the same for the Colts. More dominance this time. Nice extra pass to Ferrer for the basket as the Lady Colts are headed to the Class 3A Northwest Region Final with a 40-point win over Childersburg, 78-38. They'll take on the winner of this one, Lauderdale County, in action against midfield in the other 3A semifinal. The Tigers got their attack going. Sheila Marks with a nice take to the rim. Remember that name early. Midfield would go shot for shot. Nice bucket here. But that's when Marks would take over. First, it's a floater in the lane for the bucket and the foul. And then it's a barrage to the corner for Marks again. She made her mark in this one. Cash. Then at the end of the quarter, put the ball in her hands because of course she's going to hit that one too. A buzzer beater. What a performance from the junior. She would finish with 32 as the Tigers advance to the region final to take on Clements next Wednesday. Turning our attention to the guys' court, the Danville Harps were in action in the Class 3A Northwest Region semifinal against Winfield, and they got off to a hot start. Aiden Holiday with the slash to the rim for an easy two, and they would add to the lead. Off the inbounds, Avery Muhammad gets a short floater to go, but Winfield came to play outside for Preston Nelson. He gets the three ball to keep the Pirates in this game, but Danville would close the door. Ty Bailey, the basket, and the foul. The Hawks built a double-digit lead as they hold on to win 49-42. We'll now play in the region final on Wednesday. A lot of players in our locker room whose parents, uncles, grandfathers, they could never do what we just did tonight. So this is really big for just the whole town of Danville. I'm sure they're excited about it. That'll wrap up a busy week of high school hoops here in Hansville for everything Northwest Region semifinals. We'll send it to our own Max Cohan. A trip to the Elite Eight. Wouldn't that be great? Well, here's who made it in the late slate at Jackson State. Eider and Shanrock get us started at JSU with the Hornets looking to buzz their way back to the regional final for the second consecutive season. Kenzie Smith was on fire in the first quarter for the Hornets, making every single shot she took with her first triple giving Eider the lead. Then she would pull off the pick two, intercepting the pass and taking it back to the bucket as the Hornets double their lead in the opening period. At one point, Eider led by 11, but Sandrock would have it down to five points at the half. Caitlin St. Clair had a huge day for the Lady Wildcats with 19 points, but Aubrey Chapman had 19 and Kenzie Smith finished with 18 as the Hornets fly to the final with the 63-51 dub. Up next, the 2A boys, a battle between North Sand Mountain and Gaston. The Bison trying to reach the regional final for the first time since 2003, and they started strong behind the arc. Blake Maples making it look easy as he made two quick threes to put the Bison up double digits. He hit five from deep in this one, and then how about Atlas Smith? Cleaning up the boards and putting the ball back up and in, he led the team with seven rebounds, but Cody Bogle and Micah Merriman went off for the Bulldogs, combining for 43 points as Gaston's strong second half keeps the Bison out of the Elite Eight, 67 to 61. On the other side of the girls' bracket, it's Carrie Ellison and the Pisgah Eagles trying to make it past the team that ended their last season, the Lynette Panthers. Much like last year, this game was tight. Campbell Barron's lead pass to Paisley Patalis is perfect and ties the game at four early, and Coach Ellison was not loving the way things were going in the first as the Panthers' fast break tied the game at 10. The Eagles would give him some relief as Patalis puts them up three, but Lynette would just not go away. It was a two-point game at the break and a three-pointer after three. The Eagles would eventually pull away in the fourth, punching their ticket to the final with the 58-47 win. And to close us out tonight, it's Section and Lafayette. And you can't talk about this game without Josh Varner. The Lions went to him early and often. The senior was money from distance, knocking down three of five first half attempts. That was big as the Lions tried to keep Vidarian Story off the board for the Bulldogs. He had 12 of Lafayette's 20 at the break. 
Section led by seven at the half, but couldn't hang on as the Bulldogs advanced to the final, 53 to 44. And that'll wrap up another busy day of regional basketball coverage. Be sure to stick with us for the duration of the AHSAA basketball tournament. Reporting in Jacksonville with coverage you can count on, Max Cohan, Way 31 Sports.